Hi everyone, today I'm painting another La Catrina or Sugar Skull Girl in acrylics and telling you about the origin of La Calavera Catrina and then about my painting process. So I made the first Sugar Skull Girl painting two years ago and by the way the printable coloring page of that painting and an ethnic girl coloring calendar are available in my Etsy shop. There's a link on the video or below. I was inspired by Halloween and Day of the Dead makeup tutorials, but I also looked up what's the history of Sugar Skulls and La Catrina. When I was younger, Halloween was not popular in Finland and I don't think I even knew about the Day of the Dead. Instead, we had All Saints Day when you remember passed away relatives and go light candles on their graves. Day of the Dead has similar traditions. It's about remembering passed away loved ones and visiting their graves, but it's also a very colorful and even a happy celebration. The graves are decorated with flowers, jewelry or candy, and there's music and stories. In some places it also includes similar costume dress-up aspects as Halloween. The symbol of Day of the Dead is a skull and one type of treat made for the celebration is a sugar skull. Well, how is La Catrina related to this? I watched a Dia de los Muertos video by Somni ASMR from a couple of years back, which explained this and I'll link it below so you can check it out if you want to know more about the Day of the Dead. But basically, La Calavera Catrina or La Calavera Carvancera was an illustration created by an artist called Jose Guadalupe Posada in 1910 to 1913 as a satire of indigenous upper class Mexican people who imitated a European style, made their skin look lighter with makeup and basically denied their own cultural heritage. The name for a man who would dress this way was El Catrin and La Catrina is the female version of that name. And now La Catrina has become an icon for the Day of the Dead and people might dress up as El Catrin or La Catrina for the Day of the Dead or for Halloween. One of the inspirations for my sketches were the figurines made by Elena Nares, which are so cute and colorful. And I recommend checking out her Instagram at El Catrinero to see the figurines. Now moving on to how I made this painting. For my last Sugar Skull Girl painting I used a very simple and symmetric pose and let the bright colors and contrasts be the focal point of the painting. But for this one I wanted to make the pose a bit more interesting and I wanted to make a bigger painting overall. I found the reference photo from Storyblocks, which was then called Graphic Stock, and I got it from a free 7 day trial they offered. I used the grid method to get the proportions about right while I was sketching, and I linked to a video on how I make a grid on a photo and used the grid drawing method. I drew the patterns on her face by combining different things I liked from Halloween makeup looks and paintings. I transferred the sketch onto a canvas board with graphite transfer paper and painted over the transfer with matte medium to prevent the drawing from smudging my acrylic paints. The last painting had warm and bright colors which I think suits the Day of the Dead and Mexican culture well, but I wanted to try a different color scheme for this painting. I made the background black to contrast with the bright colors and the white skeleton and I got the pink, lilac and cream color scheme for the flowers from the actual photo reference I was using and used that for the face decorations too. I knew her hair was going to be dark so I had to add something lighter in the background next to her hair so the hair wouldn't blend into the black background. And I decided to use Monstera leaves for that. I started painting by blocking in the main colors and then adding more layers for shading and highlights and details. I made the skin or the skeleton, whichever way you want to see it, light blue and tied the picture together 
by shading with blue throughout the painting. However, once the painting was almost finished, I hoped the skeleton was more white than blue and I added more white on top, but it was too late to make any drastic changes without having to paint the face decorations all over again. I don't usually paint eyes closed and it took a while to make them look okay. I decided to show the spine in the neck, but I was making this painting in a kind of a hurry and couldn't make it overly detailed. So the hands are not skeleton hands, but just hands with white skin. Finally, I've been waiting for a painting where I could add rhinestones ever since I saw Malinda Prudhomme's Indian portraits where she adds rhinestones on the art. So I did that with this painting. I glued on sequins and rhinestones on the forehead with jewelry glue. All the paints and supplies I used will be listed below if you're interested. Prints and stickers and postcards and other merch of this painting will be up in my Redbubble shop if you want to check it out. I post a new video every week and it's usually a speed painting like this or an art tutorial or a real-time ASMR art video. So thanks for watching and happy Halloween, Day of the Dead and All Saints Day. See you next week. Bye!